Hmm, we had a tragic here and welcome to my latest mod. This is Pathfinder the Adventure Card Game and this is Wrath of the Rune Lords. Now, this little instruction video has a lot to get through. I'll try not to rabbit on too much, uh, but I call myself Tragic the Blathering for a reason. <laughs> I tend to blather on, so I'll try and keep this under five hours long, shall we? So this is what you're greeted with when you load up the game. But if we have a look over here, this is where the cards are and all the, all the action is. Now, the first thing you'll note is that there's all these little stop signs, and that's because at the current point in the mod, I've created the base game and I'm the first two expansions only. I have also added in all the characters. I have not added in the class decks. I have not added in expansion three to six. These will be coming soon when I get around to it, but I thought that now would be a good time to release the mod because it's pretty much done except for adding content. And if people do choose to play it, they can give me some feedback you know, I can build them, make the mod better through their feedback. That's what those big things are, just to remind you. Now, the content is actually in these things, like all the contents actually in there, but uh, I just haven't integrated them into the scripting engine of the mod yet. Okay, so first thing you need to do is pick your scenario. So the base set scenario, like the B scenarios, are all in here. Okay, so you want to grab your scenario, dump it on the right hand side, and then you grab your scenario and dump it on the left. So adventure, sorry, on the right, scenario on the left. So I've put out into the world wound and the godless ones are out. Now, if I click this button, nothing will happen because it'll error and say you need to set up your players first. And that is because this game uses like a global card pool. And what that means is that your character decks are drawn from the same pool that you create the abstracted map from, or the locations. So you need to build your character decks first because you don't want your character cards, the cards in, that you want to be in your character deck, to be placed into the locations because there's only a finite number of cards. So build your characters first. Now if we look at the rules section, We'll just zap along to the uh, spot I'm looking for. The base set comes with these guys in red, okay? And then the character add-on deck adds four other characters. Now, if you come down to where I put out the character bags, you'll see that we have all the gray bags of the base set and all the green ones of the character add-on set. And the purple ones are just ones that I liked. And also there was a bit of room. It looks nice and neat. Basically, in Pathfinder... For example, like Kyra is in a lot of sets, okay? But the Wrath of the Righteous version of Kyra is unique to this set. You can't use Rise of the Rune Lords Kyra in Wrath of the Righteous, okay? Well, not legally, not you know, officially. But officially, the these little goblin promo guys are completely generic and are allowed to be used in any set using official rules. I think there's actually a fourth goblin now because uh, Mummy's Mask wasn't out when I, when I first started setting this up. That's how long this mod is. This is actually a modification of the very first mod that I ever made. Uh, I, I started rebuilding this for the, the new Pathfinder 2nd Edition uh, and sort of got carried away. Anyway, whatever. The point is, these goblins are here as well. So all you need to do if you want to grab, say, this guy, you just jump him on the location you want him to play as, and you just hit place, and it puts him all out. It also puts out this little button that'll fetch the deck, or if you want to use your own deck and you click it, it'll delete that button, and then you just build your own deck. If you want to build your own deck, you can just right click on any of these, and you go search, type in basic, and it will actually just show just the basic files. That's a very quick way to just see the basic uh, cards to build your starter decks. I have actually integrated into this mod a complete deck builder, which we'll talk about later. Also, there's a little hero dispenser chest. If you pull this out, it says it shuffles it. And basically, 
you can just uh, use this to get a random setup. I like using random setups personally. I think that's left over from my days as a <laughs> as an Arkham Horror fan. But, uh, you know, do whatever you want. So when you hit place, it'll just place them all out. If there's already an existing person, it'll just replace them. If there is an existing person and a bag, it'll just delete the other bag anyway. So even if I have this and I hit Kyra, it'll just put out Kyra and clean everything else up. So once you have your people out, Oh, also, there's a little bag up here near the rules. I've just called it tool player tools. There's a few things in there, but one of the things in there is this little button called clear board, just in case you ever need it. If you just drop that on a board, it'll clear the board and send any, you know, uh, cards on it back to the base. Let's chuck this bin back in the bin. I didn't get anyone twice. No. Once you have your people out, if you hit setup, it's still going to error because not only do you need your people out, like I said, you need to build your physical deck. Now, if you look at here, even though they gave us all these characters, this game really only allows you to play with four. It's capable of playing six, but by default, it plays four. If you want to play six characters, you have to add in more cards. Also, if you want to play with any of the character add-on characters you have to add more cards from the character add-on deck so let's just drag this out and the first thing you drag out of this bag is the entire character add-on deck as one big block this is the easiest way to do it all you need to do is drop that into the bin and it will send all the appropriate cards to the card pool and bam you're ready to play for people who are more advanced i have split them up into sections so all the Banes are in their individual decks here and all the Boons are in their individual cards here. The first thing you draw out of the Boon, the Boon bag is all the Boons in a single deck. But, you know, if you just want to have just the Blessings or just the, uh, you know, the, the Allies or whatever, that, that's in there as well. You have, if you play six people, you have to at least, at the very least, add the extra henchmen. Now there's also a promo decks here. Now the promo cards are pretty rare. Uh, I'm not quite sure how easy they are to get. All I know is that some of the scans are atrociously bad. Uh, I've got all the promo boons, promo banes, and then the iconic heroes. I'll talk about them last. I've also got them the iconic hero cards without any script. So you can just drop that straight into the bin to add them to the pools. But I'm just going to add the boons and the banes and uh, get rid of these. So the iconic hero cards were special cards that came with the miniatures. And they're really powerful. They don't really have, you know, they're not basics or elites or something. They're, just, there's this weird, they're a weird type of card. And they've got this thing called owner. And that means that if you have the owner trait... Like this one says Ezrin, this one says Olak, this one says Balazar. If you have the owner trait, you can use this as if it was a basic in your starting deck for that character only. So there's a couple of ways to use this deck. For starters, if you wanted to just use all the cards, just drag out the uh, iconic hero deck that doesn't have any script on it and you just drop it in the bin it'll be sent to the correct locations okay the other way to use it is to drag out the scripted one and if you press this button it'll fetch from that deck all the cards that are owned by your current team and then you can just chuck the, the deck out and I'll show you and I'll put that in a bit later so now what we have is we've got our team out, we've got our scenario, our adventure picked, we've got our scenario picked. Let's hit the setup button, but oh wait, it's still erring because it's, you have to build the decks first. So 
all you got to do is press the fetch buttons and it will fetch the default decks so up here uh, up here you got like these default uh, decks you know like recommended decks just to get you started uh, that's what these buttons are fetching okay so say if you if you have Balazar but you want to use your own deck just click your own deck and it'll actually just delete that uh, deck button and you can build your own deck from scratch I'll just fetch this one I'll fetch this one now I have built a deck builder to help you build decks and I'll go through that later but for now there's some other little tricks you can do like if you right click any of the decks just go search you can just type in basic and it'll show you all the basic cards and that's a, a quick way to uh, modify your deck on the fly if you want to I'm just going to pull out the Balazar default character and replace him and just fetch his deck okay so the way the scenario set up you can see also actually on the left uh, see how it's got like a big readout of the deck that's been fetched if you're missing decks if you're missing cards it'll just error and tell you what cards are missing so that's a really quick way you can you know fix up your your uh, your decks if there's any problems so now with the iconic heroes right we're playing with balazar we've got balazar's hat that's an ally so all i need to do i can just search this and get rid of one of the allies let's get rid of the vulture and i'll give him the hat we've got earthbreaker that's a great weapon for crow crow is down here We'll just search here. We'll pull out his long spear. Actually, we'll pull out his mace. Is that bludgeoning? Yeah, we'll pull out his mace and put in his thing here, and so on and so forth. And like, you just do that for all the different, uh, you know. And as you can see, some of these cards are pretty terrible quality. And that's because they're quite rare and I think some of these are like this one here I know is actually taken from mobile phone scan on eBay of the guy selling the card so it's pretty bad some of them are good though you know and I have actually rebuilt a couple of these cards for my current game that I'm playing like if I search this deck Here's an example of a card that I've rebuilt in Photoshop, just because it was unreadable. If I ever play the game myself and I find unreadable cards, I will rebuild them. But I'm not going to go through and rebuild a million cards just straight off. Okay, whatever. So now we've got all our decks. Now the way the scenario set up tests how many players is by finding these decks in the player areas. So if you have one deck it'll set up a one player game if you have six decks it'll set up a six player game and so forth so we've got six decks we just hit scenario bam and you can see there's a big all the a readout in the back of the in the text box telling you what's going on okay so as you can see a lot of stuff happened here we have the locations moved up here you can pop them all up We've got all the locations here. We've got the blessing deck here, and we've got the blessing discard pile here. Over here, we have the demoling. This is the servitor demon for Into the World Wound adventure. So, if you look at the servitor table, you've got Into the World Wound has demoling, and they get harder and harder and harder as you you go through the sets. But that is basically the servitor demon. If we had a scenario that has a cohort. This one has Celia uh, the Uprooter. When we do the setup, it'll also put the uh, cohort here. And if you just pick that up, it'll, it'll shrink. So all the cohorts go in this little spot here. Okay, and that is basically how to get the game started. Now, it sounded like a lot, but it's really not that bad. Uh, I can do it in literal seconds. You just... Drag this out, drag that out, drop it into the deck, drop any cards you want, pick your heroes, press the setup button. Pretty cool. There are quests that have much more involved things going on. So if I just load up the uh, 
If I just load up the base set again, let's grab the add-on deck. Won't bother with the promos this time. I'll just get out my characters. This time I'll play with four. And this time I'm going to play with the Swords of Valor. That's expansion two. So if I pull this out, in this area here, I've got all the cards from number two and number one. So all you need to do is drop that in here and you're ready to play. And once again, I've got everything, uh, you know, separated the decks if you require it. Let's grab out the adventure. And if I go into here, there are some fancy adventures. Like, so let's do the siege. This has a specialized setup. Okay. So only build the first location, blah, 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 blah. So when I, what I'm trying to get at here is that I have scripted the specialized setups. So if I do the, the, uh, the setup this time, you can see that this particular scenario has its own custom, uh, setup that you have to deal with. Okay. And you can just keep playing so forth. But the important takeaway from that little section is that for the first three, uh, expansions, right? So up to number two, the ones that I've done, there's no functionality to remove cards from the game pool. So if you look at the scenario, it says at the beginning of dark heresy, when you banish a bane with a basic trait, remove it from the game completely. Okay. So until then it just keeps adding to the card pool. So if you want to play the world wound, you have to add all the world wound cards. If you want to play Sword of Valor, you need to add all the Sword of Valor cards and all the Wounded Incursion cards. And that's all in that single deck. So again, to add these decks, you just drag them out, drop the entire deck in like that, and uh, you're done. Okie dokie. So now, it is time to go through the player board section here. So let's uh, let's do it on this bloke here. We'll put him at the watchtower. For starters, there's a couple of things. Uh, the first thing is every time you do your turn, you have to press the advanced blessing deck for your turn. So you press that button. It turns from red to green to let you know. And if you look in the chat window, it actually outputs a little uh, output telling you what the, the deck is. I actually like to kind of get the chat window and just sort of make it small and stretched out when I play just so I can see what's going on. So this one is saying that the neck, the, the current blessing is blessing of stacks and it's corrupted. And you can see that up here, blessing of shacks and it's corrupted. And this will stay green just so is because I often find that I have a real issue remembering to advance the button. So uh, now it's very clear to me. So yeah, so you just click this and it will advance the blessings. And it also has a little turn counter. Whoever is your last player, right? If you right click on the advanced blessings, blessings deck, instead of left clicking, it says green has been set as the last player, right? And now if I click that button, it'll reset all the other decks back to red. This one here is on a timer. So it's like 30 seconds for every player. It's not too complicated. I could make it more complicated by having like a, a, a first and last player icon that you could drop on the table or something, but this works fine. So this is just gonna, after a timeout period, this will turn red. And by the time you've done all the other turns, this will be red. So it's not too much of an issue. So that is the blessing, uh, the blessing button. Let's have a quick look at the draw button. This is very simple. You just press it once and it draws. If you press it four times or whatever, it'll draw four cards, okay? So just the amount of times you press the button, it'll then process the clicks after you finish drawing. And all my buttons work like that. Now we have the roll buttons. Basically to do a roll, you just type, click 
left click to add dice, right click to remove dice, and then you hit the roll button. Oh, and this the one here is the modifier. It goes to negative uh, five, I think. I don't think that you ever will. You'll never use negative five, but uh, it goes that far anyway. So if I hit the roll button, it'll do the roll. And bam, it'll move anything out of the way because this little spot here is where the card goes. And it'll also output into the chat window a little results thing. You'll also note that this sort of yellow button here, which matches our player color. So like if I was actually playing a multiplayer game, I'd be sitting at the yellow seat. I'd have a yellow hand. I've got yellow around here. The setup colored my marker yellow. And I've also got this little yellow number here. That number there is my actual roll, the, the, what I rolled, including the modifier, okay? So if you hit the little X button, it'll reset all the die values, and if you right click it, it'll remove the dice. So if I roll a six and I add plus one, and I roll, you can see the, the modifier working a little. So there you go, I rolled a six, but I actually scored a seven. So it does all the calculations for you. Now. If you uh, do another roll, it'll clear any current dice. So you, you don't really need to use the X button unless you want to. Just sometimes if you want to just clear them, you right click to get rid of the dice and left click on the X will reset all the roll buttons. So that's the roll buttons. And the next thing is the actual readout button. So if I do another roll, this readout button, the yellow button here, this will actually fetch whatever the top card is of your current location deck. So up here, we're at the watchtower. You can see it's got 10 cards. If I press, if you look up the top of the screen, if I press the yellow button, it'll draw the top card and display it. Okay, so I just uh, draw a card. It's a monster. It's an easy to kill monster. Let's just do a mace. That's a... Uh, a D8, oh, we forgot to advance the blessing deck. So that's a D8 for strength, plus another D8. And we're also going to banish a Caltrop to add a D4, and we'll do a roll. We need an 11 to pass, and we get an eight. So we fail, which means you have to shuffle that into a random location, and you just go on. That's how you play, basically. So now let's show you how the discard buttons work. Now the discard button is kind of complicated, a lot going on with the discard button, but I will uh, make a little infographic to go through it. Basically, anything that's placed in this area here, so if I just draw uh, this area here, anything that's placed in this area here, is returned to your hand when you press the discard button, okay? Anything in this area here is either recharged or discarded to the discard pile. And anything in here, this area here is banished. So I'll show you that in action. So if I played a card, Say I played a Blessing of Ascension. I played these two things. I've uh, got the Corroded Helm. If I now hit Discard, this will go to the Discard pile. These two things will go back into my hands. That's the Revealed area. And this will be Banished. Yunk and bam, that's that. I have added some extra functionality. Basically, anything in the Banished area if it's face down, it'll be ignored. So, let's just draw a couple more cards. Anything face down will just be ignored and that can be kind of handy, okay? But in the play area where you're playing cards, anything that is face down is gonna be recharged. So I can do this. And the face down ones will be recharged and the 
face up ones will be discarded like so okay recharge in this game just means put on the bottom of the deck and you can do the same thing here so anything you put down here will be sent back to your hand okay so that's like the reveal spot and this is where you play cards but sometimes like if you reveal so like say I say I uh, I do detect demon and I fail the roll I'm I might need to discard it I mean I might need to recharge it so I can just flip it over and now it'll be recharged also if you tap it it'll be if you tap it with the Q big pardon it'll be uh, banished and if you tap it with the E it'll be discarded for that little section and that's basically how it works there's quite a lot going on there I understand that but it once you get used to it it becomes very intuitive I think at least for me so when you play cards you put them up there if you want to recharge a card you put it face down if you want a card to be revealed and put back in your hand you place it face up here if you want to uh, banish it just tap it sideways if you want to discard it just tap it the other way and if you want it recharged you have it upside down and this button draws from the location deck anything in this area here will just be uh, banished and if it's upside down in the banish area it'll be ignored so if I discard it'll clear up this table for me your blammo and that's the way I play I just keep playing cards and then when I'm done I hit discard and it sorts it all out for me and what I'll do I haven't actually made it yet but I will put it in before release in the player tools area I'll have or maybe I'll just put it up here so it's permanently visible I'll have a little infographic explaining those areas for you guys now also uh, if we have a look at uh, Anduin, let's put her at the Wounded Lands. She has a cohort by default. Okay. Now cohorts, like say Learn, for example, they can be displayed but not discarded for quite a while. They can be displayed over multiple turns. So if I hit, uh, you know, the discard button with the cohort out, it ignores the cohort. It ignores the cohort by default. Okay, so it ignores the cohort by default. But if I right click the uh, the discard button, it'll also get cohorts. So that is the discard button. There's a lot going on with the discard button. So basically, just to quickly recap, you have this is where you play cards that you're playing this is where you're displaying cards that are just displayed during the turn and this area here is where cards get banished from so you uh you play cards by just putting them out you recharge cards by putting them face down Cards that are revealed are just placed out like that. Cards that are face down will be recharged. Cards that are tapped with the Q are discarded. Cards that cap tap with the E, uh, cards that tap with the Q are banished. Cards that tap with the E are discarded. Bam. Okay. Next, we're going to talk about the Servitor Demon. Various effects will spawn the Servitor Demon. All you need to do is click the servitor button and out she comes. You can click it multiple times if you need multiple servitor demons, not an issue. Uh, these, when they're spawned, they're, the, the game understands that they're spawned. So even though I sent them to the banish area, they don't end up back in the decks. They, they just get destroyed. So clicking the servitor demon spawns a servitor demon. That's pretty self-explanatory. But there are various things in this game that you might need to regularly draw. Uh, here we go. So we've got a Boreal Blight, for example. This is a, this is a barrier. 
So every time you encounter this barrier, you have to summon and encounter the henchman freeing this tree. So there's a little trick you can do. You can go into search, you can get the tree out. And then I can put it over here in the spawn area. And there's a bunch of spots, okay? So, do we have the guard house? Yeah, so here's the guard post, right? At the start of your turn, you must summon and encounter the henchman corrupted soldier. So let's get him as well. Yonk, and I'll put him in spot two. And you can put anything you want here. At the moment, it only goes to here, but I might continue it to there for completion's sake before I post. But the point is, once you've got these things here, with the spawn button, you can now right click and it will spawn from that location. So the fiendish tree is in position one. So if I right click once, it'll spawn the fiendish tree. If I right click twice, it'll spawn the guard. Okay, so right click twice, out comes the guard. Right click once, out comes the fiendish tree. Hit the spawn with the left click and it grabs the servitor demon. And that is the spawn button. Now, in addition to all of that kind of stuff we just talked about, there's also these little level up markers. You can just drag these out and they're just little ticks. So as you play this game, you basically level up your character. So if I just drop a tick there, I just drop a tick there. Let's say I got this feet here and whatever you want to do, okay? Uh, if you want to put it, you know, if you choose a roll, you can put the roll, you can actually just press the plus button, normal scale object, just like standard. That's not a mod thing, that's just how, just in Tabletop Simulator, if you press the plus or minus key, you know, on the number line at the top of your keyboard, it'll make them bigger or smaller. Anyway, so once you've got these where you want, uh, hit the little lock button and it sort of locks them and sinks them into the table so they don't interfere with the dice rolling and it makes a nice visual representation of what you have active. Now, when I talk about the deck builder, I'll show you how this is all saved and imported into separate things so your characters can be independent of your game saves. And uh, we'll get into that in a sec. But that's just how the uh, the tick function works. So oh, and if you make a mistake, you can just right click the lock button and it'll unlock them. So I actually wanted that over there. I uh, used the uh, the shadow as a, as a guide. Boom, there you go, bam. Okay, and there's just a, one more thing about the player boards. Basically, uh, the player board has this little button here over the actual card image. If you click this with the left button, it'll zoom to your pug. If you click the button on the pug, it zooms to your player board. This just makes it a little bit easier to zoom around the place. So say I'm playing her, I wanna have a look at my location. I can just click that and it'll zap to my location very, very easily. And I can click back on the pug to zap back to my uh, deck, uh, back to my player board. You can also right click on the player board to zoom into the player board. So say I wanna zoom in over to uh, Eleanor. I can just click on Eleanor like that, click on her to go to where she is, whatever. So that's just a little uh, quality of life feature. So click on Honora to go to Honora, click on the pug to go back to the board. And if you right click on her, you zoom into the board. Now I have actually also added a couple of uh, hotkeys for all these locations. So if you turn on the numpad, and you press one, it'll go to the one, two, three, four, five, six. They're the only ones I've done. Uh, what I tend to do is I have spacebar set to big and then I press uh, shift one to zoom up here. I can then click down here to zoom into you. Oh, I need to move him, so let's move him over to Forsaken Watch. Bam, draw. So it's a very simple way of getting around. So just to recap, if you have the num lock on, you have your hotkeys. So you go one, two, three, four, five, six. Also, if you have, if you click on 
the character card, you go to your pug. If you click on the pug, you go to your char card, character card. And if you right click on a char character card, you will zoom to the mat. Okay, so the only thing left are these buttons on the sides and these are just fetches to fetch from the card pool. So if it says draw a random monster, just hit the monster button and out will come a monster. You can click this multiple times of course and out will come multiple monsters. You can also, if you right click these buttons, they'll come out face down so they're not revealed. Okay. I just flipped it over manually. So you've got monsters, barriers, weapons, spells, armor, item, allies, and blessing. So it says draw three armors from the box. I just press it three times. Out comes three armors. I go, okay, I'm going to pick this one and boom, discard the rest, banish the rest. And that is the player board. There you go. So now we're just going to check out the last thing in the mod, and that is the deck builder, which is just over here. Just press this little red button, you blammo, up it comes. Now, this is sort of designed to be used between games, but you can use this to build your initial decks and stuff. And I've sort of set up the game to kind of mimic what an end game scenario might look like. In fact, let's... Uh, Let's uh, put some cards around the place like that. So you might end up, you know, like something like something like that or whatever. And that's when the game ends. Also, you'll note that with Crow, I put all these ticks all over the board. This is to, you know, just just make it a little uh just show you how the tick function works. Remember, you can drag out these ticks and then when you get them in position, you just right click to unlock them, click to lock them into position. So you can put these however you uh, feel like it. The point is he's got ticks on his board. So I've also got a whole bunch of uh, custom spawn cards up here and I've got a cohort card uh, down here. And that's just to show you that when you click the fetch heroes button, it'll actually send all that stuff back to the card pool. And this is important because remember the way the game works is that you play with existing card pools and you keep adding to this card pool. Later on when you get to uh, Demon's Heresy, you start removing things from the card pool, but the card pools have to be constant. Like any deck you create has to be able to be made from the card pool. So it moves everything there. It also picked up all the cards on the boards, including what's in their hands and everything, and moved them up over here. Now, it's uh, placed all the all the different deck all the different uh, decks with each character. It's also made a copy of their card list and their skill tree, just to make it a bit easier when making decks because you don't have to keep coming down here to look over here and then coming over here. Just puts it all in one place. You'll note that it even copies the all the ticks, you know, so you can see exactly what's going on. Now, remember, these are objects. So if I right click on that, it's not going to show the ticks. So you should use the M button, which is the magnifying glass. You can use the mouse wheel to change the zoom, but that allows you to zoom in. And because it's actually physically zooming the board, any objects will also be popped up as well. So that's the M button. Now, the way the deck builder works is pretty basic. Basically, we have these two buttons down here, which I'll talk about in a sec, and then we've got the deck buttons at the top. So any deck that is face up, like these ones here, are not counted. Decks are only counted when you flip them over. So this is now flipped over, it's now counted. We have five weapons, two armors, two items, two allies, and four blessings. And that readout is displayed in the tooltip of the big display deck button. See how it says the tooltip up there? And that's because when you're zoomed out doing your editing, it's a lot easier just to get the mouse over. It's actually very legible. 
Uh, but if you zoomed in, you can see the other ways. Also, if you click these buttons, you can announce them. That's just an easy way to, that's just something extra. Doesn't really, I don't use that much, but I did that anyway. But also, they're also got tooltips as well. So you can, you know, use the tooltip buttons. And these are live. So if I just take the top card off that, you'll see that the something will change. What is this? This is a item. So you see, we've got one item, put it back on now says we've got two items and uh, so as you're building your deck and if you flip it up as you're building your deck you can keep a count on what you've got in there quite easily so I just took out a couple of cards I took out one blessing and two weapons so now it says three weapons and three blessings put them back in four weapons five weapons and four blessings in addition to that, you can actually click the display button itself and it will flick out the whole deck into here and put it in order, like split it into the into, into lines based on the objects. So you can see exactly what's in the deck. And these decks are very editable. Like uh, basically, if I put anything in there, like say I go over here and I just uh, grab some spells, one, two, three, if I get these spells, say I'm doing my deck editing, I go, okay, I want those spells. I can just grab them, chuck them over here. And when I right click display deck, it'll pack them all up and anything in there. So you can be very rough with how you do cards. Basically anything on this board will be added to the deck. You can see that they're in there. And also, of course, you can see that the display now says three spells. It says three spells down here. So that's one way to edit your decks. You can also also just go search and just pull things out and pull things in. It's all up to you. Now there is a function in uh, Pathfinder that says, if you are unable to make a legal deck out of your current card pool, you can use any basic card from the card pool to fill those gaps. So you can right click on the spells, go search and just type in basic right and you see all the basic cards right alternatively you can click this little button up here and it will just fetch all the basic cards from all the decks okay so this deck here is nothing but basics I can now hit the place button and it'll fan out the cards in a nice easy to read block for us so again I could display husks Husk de husk's desk deck. God, I can't even speak. You know, and I go, you know what? I want to give him the journal instead of this thing, and I'll give him uh, this thing here instead of this thing here. Right? Then I can right click to pack them up, right click to pack them up, and so forth. The other one is basically just the same thing. It's just another, so you can have multiple large decks here. And I do that because the way I like to edit my decks is I actually just like to put them all in a big massive pile and just place them all out. And then I can uh, see my entire card pool and get a better idea of what I'm gonna be doing. Now, it's hard to see because I'm just using the basic decks let's just grab a whole bunch of blessings and just make sure we only grab non-basic blessings oh very oh that's right because i've taken all the basics out haven't i okay so let's we've got four, eight non-basic blessings now so right click to pack up left click to place what this what the deck editor when it fans will do is that anything that's not basic will start on a new line it doesn't separate elites and veterans and all that kind of stuff because it would make the list too long. But it just means that at a glance, you can see what are basic cards and what are not basic cards. So all basic cards are on a different line. It does put everything in alphabetical order as well. Now, the, a little trick to making your decks, besides using the display deck button, is the face up, face down thing. So for example, Say I'm doing, uh, say I've got a bunch of cards already selected, okay? So they've all got a, a bunch of cards already selected. So I've gone through my editor and I've gone through my list and I've 
already selected these cards and I'm happy with these cards. So I've turned them over and added them to the deck. Now say I want to come over here and do my weapons. He gets five weapons. So I can actually pick the weapons, one, two, three, four, five, and I can place them, but I place them face up. Now, even though I've put it up here and taken them out of the card pool and all everything, it hasn't actually added to the other deck. It's completely separate. And this is really handy. So say I give her, her another, what she gets? She gets five weapons, one, two, three, four, five. I can do that as well, place them over. And then I go, you know what? I really want to use, uh, I really want to say this is here. I say, I really want to use this thing. I can actually just right click and go search and it just shows me whatever's face up. So I can take that out, I'll put this in here. I'm now happy with that. So once I'm happy with all these, I just come along and I flip them all over and add them to the current decks. Gets counted, gets displayed, and it's ready to go. And of course I can always do a, a more detailed look if I want to see what everything looks like in more detail. So these buttons here, again, it's right uh, one click to place, right click to pack up, click to place, right click to pack up. These will also understand if there's something out. So if I just do a left click on the other deck, it'll actually pack up the first deck before it displays. Now at the moment, this button here only fetches basic cards, but once I get round to doing the, the Demon's Heresy, it'll also you know work for all the other types of cards it can pick up. Because basically once you get to Demon's Heresy, you start banishing cards from the games and you start being able to use different types of cards during your deck creation process and uh, that'll all start to happen once I uh, once I get to programming that stage. At the moment the mod is only designed to work as far as Swords of Valor. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to put make make some decks with these guys okay just just some random decks. Okay so they've all given them uh, 15 uh, cards. So say I've gone through the deck editor and I've created the decks that I wanted to use. There's this little button here called create hero's chest and you just click this and it will create a chest for that hero. Now of course you could just save the whole mod as a save file and then you know everything would be fine but this way these decks, are these little chests act exactly the same way as these opening chests here. So like, let's uh, we, we put these on our different heroes, like so. And you just hit the fetch button and it grabs everything on the board. It also grabs the pug up the top. You can see the pugs disappearing. And really importantly, it grabs all the ticks everything as well that you've leveled up your character. It's all placed in here. And then finally, you've got the chest dispenser you can bring out. Now, what's interesting about this is, is that this deck contains everything on the player board for your characters leveling up. Plus it contains a button that creates the deck out of the current card pool, which is down here. What that means is, is that I can load up any game if I want to play with my friend, I want to bring my own crow. All I need to do is import this uh, crow chest and it's completely independent. So if I just right click him and I go save object. Oh wait, if you go to the, I've got to tell you how to do that first. If you go to objects, saved objects, you can make directories in here. I'm just going to call this uh, demo so i can right click this crow thing and go save object and save it into demo and i'll just call it crow max level and now i have that character is saved out and i can use him in any any of uh any of uh the scenarios inside this mod all i need to do is import him out and place him in addition, if I hit the fetch card pool button, it will fetch all the current decks, plus it'll fetch the current card pool being used, 
which is important. Because if it fetches the current card pool, it'll also fetch the, the graveyard. Because remember, when you build decks, it's sort of additive. So if you've done special things, like you've added cards from the class decks, you've added promos, you've added character add-on cards, you've added your own custom cards, whatever you've done, if you use the fetch current card pool, it'll save all that as well. So if I press this, it'll error though, because it says you have not closed the deck editor. And that's because all these cards are actually part of the current card pool and they need to be returned before you can save the card pool. So I'm gonna click, uh, not fetch, I'm gonna click uh, close deck builder, be pardon. And that will close and send all the cards back to the card pool. And now I can just hit fetch cards and it will build my chess for me. So I'll rename this, I'll call this demo, ch uh, demo chest. I'm gonna save that. Demo all chest. Okay, and that's it. I've saved the car pool, I'm ready to go. This is ready to go. Now, if I actually just load up the mod, so this is loading it raw off the workshop, so I've just loaded up the mod raw from the workshop. Now, normally, I would need to rebuild my card pool, have to put in the character out on deck, put in my promos, but not anymore. All I need to do is go object, saved objects, and drag out my all chest like so. I have my saved heroes chest, which will shuffle when you load it, which means you can do random placements if you like. And then I just drag these out and place them just like I did with the, the bags at the very beginning of this video, if you can remember back that far. <laughs> so let's place these guys out. Boom. And you'll note that uh, Crow here has got all the ticks were saved. So all his uh, ticks are saved, they've recolored the things, they're all ready to go. And finally, you pull out the next one, this is the place the card pool. You press this button, it will delete the card pool that exists, including the graveyard deck, and then replace them with the correct card pool. And now you should just be able to grab your cards and you're ready to play. Beautiful. And the thing is, that seems like a bit of a roundabout way of doing it. It just means, I mean, you could just save the game and play from the save file, but this way you have you can have individual chests ready to go play multiple games with different setups, different characters, and I just think it's a much neater way to do it, which is why I've designed it this way, because, you know, I make these mods mainly for me to play, and I just hope other people will like them. But if I load up the beta 2 again, one of the cool things is you can actually have your own characters. So if I go to save object, I go to my demo, and I just pull out the Crow Max level chest. So this is just the chest and I can pull this into anyone's game. Someone sends me a Discord message and says, hey, we're playing Pathfinder, do you want to come? I go, oh, you know what? I've got a really cool Alchemist character. I'll bring it over. I can just bring out my chest. I can just go place. It's placed all the stuff. The thing is though, if I go fetch, let's see if this actually fetches. It does fetch. Okay, so let me uh, let me do this again. Let me do this again, and I'll just bring out my Crow Max level. I'll also just for just bring out some other heroes just to deplete the card pool a little. We'll put in this thing. Nice. Okay, so if I fetch these guys' decks, these will all fetch fine. Now, if I try and fetch Crow, it'll probably error, and it does. And you can see down the bottom it says, these are the cards I'm missing, and it names them. And that's just because just from the way we did our deck building, there's there's more cards being requested by the players than are active in our pool. And that is one of the reasons why you save your card pools. 
But when you're importing just the individual chests, this is very handy because you say you're you're going to play from the start of the game, you're going to play with some new characters, but you want to play one really powerful character. It'll tell you exactly what cards are missing, and then you can just grab them from. So you say, oh, you know, I'm using a Sword of Valor card. I need to get, uh, you know, the Wand of Circular's Circulation, the Wand of Cancellation. And then you can put that into the, the pool. And then when you click the button, it'll be able to fetch everything. And that's just a way you can have, like, these individual chests with just your favorite characters already leveled up and all done. And that, my friends, is the mod. Uh, basically, all I have to do is create the, the next bunch of expansions. There's quite a lot of content. So there's to, to work through to before you get up to Demon Heresy. But when I do Demon Heresy, I'll add in the functionality to use the graveyard for discarding and all this kind of stuff. And that's all going to be done soon. I am also have decided I will be adding in the, the character decks. I was having a look at these character decks and they're actually really awesome. Basically, the character decks, they all come with three characters and they all come with their own sets of cards that can get added to the pool that you're playing with. And they're even got basic cards. And what it basically means is that anyone, not only are you adding all these cards to the, the pool, anyone can use these basic cards, not just the, the, the characters. You know, I, I think it's really cool. I don't know whether they're the official rules, but they're the rules I'm going to play. And all these characters... They're all got different abilities and interesting abilities like the alchemists are where are the alchemists they're up here somewhere these the alchemists are really cool so I'm probably going to add them next because I can add all of that stuff in without doing any major reprogramming so next is these guys and then I'll be doing the rest of the content but it will be slowing down because this was supposed to be a nice little light project I ended up going overboard with it as always and uh, I've got some more my uh, son's doing a, a a programming course, an online programming course. I'm going to help him make a computer game and help him out with that. So there's another project sort of taken priority for now. That's why I'm releasing this now, just so people can start using it. If they have any comments or suggestions or problems, or if it's too complicated to use, they can let me know and I can work on that in future revisions. But that's it. I hope you like this mod, and I will see you guys. Next.